Amen? Amen. We are continuing to wait on the Lord. I believe that God is speaking to you and is trying to remove and prune many things that are not actually supposed to be able to dwell in the branch that is supposed to bear fruits, and I believe will be effective. Let's appreciate the, the worship team once again, led by our own elder Philip. Yes, he has authored and produced two songs. And uh, I love the song that he produced just before our theme came out. And it really depicts to be in the presence of God. And we pray God will continue to use as many of you or God, to be able to do many things. And you can promote by watching the song. It's on YouTube. And the Lord will bless you. Turn with me in the book of John, chapter 14, from verse 31. C, or is it D? I want to read the last sentence of John chapter 14. It's almost where we left from, and I will go and read the whole of chapter 15 and share the word of God. The Bible says this from the book of John chapter 14, the last part. Come now, let us live. Seems like Jesus, after finishing the Holy Communion, lives. And he starts to say in chapter 15 that I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in me. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such a branches are picked, uh, are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words in remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is, for the fa this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in, in, in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's command, and, um, uh, and this so that my joy, uh, 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 just as I have obeyed my Father's command and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from the Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. I want to pause there. And may the Lord bless his word. Uh, we had, our theme for this uh, year is in his presence. And majorly we are looking at God being able to allow us to be at his feet. That is the thing. In fact, I have entitled my message, The Fruit in His Presence. Not necessarily the fruit that Jesus asked to, you to bear, but how can you dwell? How can you be the indisputable fact that you are at his feet? And he actually says, this is it. That is the why I've used the term, the fruit in the present. You, the fruit. You, whatever you radiate, whatever that comes from you, being in the presence of God, that God can rubber stamp and put and say, this is my son, this is my daughter. And so today, I read the exact passage where we are getting the, 
theme in his presence. In his presence. It's just a theme exposition, and I pray God will help you to understand. And before I delve in the message, one of the things that you need to know, there are principles that guide everything. For many of you who have put up some prospects for this year, they say that if you don't change some behaviors, you may not get there. So there are principles that guide everything. And God tried to put some through this particular scripture, which I would be able to look at and conclude. I looked at a lion. I told you that I like watching animals. And I like actually the fight between lions and buffaloes. Because while the lion is, a, is the king of the jungle, it takes so many of them to bring down the buffalo. But on one rare occasion, I saw one lion bring down a buffalo. When it jumped and it took hold of the, you see, the esophagus, and it stayed there. It stayed there for about 10 minutes. It's called suffocation. The buffalo died out of one lion. But I want to believe that the lion missed one principle, the hunting in the groups. Because that is the, that is the, the key principle in the, in the way the lion, the lion move together. And I learned that, um, now, after seeing that lion, I watched another one that attempted to kill one buffalo. And the lion was killed terribly, terribly. And I, I can dare tell you, the principle of the lion hunting is that it should always be in a group. When it misses that principle, it could just be a miracle, which some of us are trusting in this kind of prayer. You should not follow a miracle principle kind of thing that when they laid hands on me, I became, well, that it can be. So I saw another lion killed terribly, and it was hungry, and it attempted to go to one, and it was kicked. For many of you who watch with me, Actually, that, that viral thing, you realize that then the buffalo kicked the lion and one of his horns took hold of one of the hind legs and pushed it off. And that lion was, died terribly. What is the thing there? Lack of the principle of hunting. So Jesus gives us some principles in this particular passage. And I want to invite us to look at what he talked to this. And it's a gathering in the upper room. And as you look at this, this is a farewell speech, as I had mentioned last week in the previous sermon, and he's there with the disciples. And I want you to picture yourself that maybe you are witnessing Jesus talking to the disciples in that place, and they had all communion, and he's trying to talk to them. What was he going to say to them? Slide number three. What was Jesus going to say? When you look at chapter 14, where I've just read the last chapter, we see Jesus saying, come now, let us leave. So when Jesus was with the disciples in the upper room, giving them the principles of how they dwell in the presence of God, did he go and write chapter 15 in a different place? That's another thing that I want us to introspect. Or was it written for them as they were walking out from the room? A question I cannot answer. But Jesus took the opportunity to speak to them in an allegory, which is like a symbolism, not so much like a parable. It was not so hidden. You know, there were parables of two people walking. One will be taken, another one will be left. Jesus does not speak a parable here. He speaks of an example. And he gives this in direct comparison. This is a direct comparison where everything is interpreted. He interprets what he says. If you remain in me and I in you, and he repeats several words in that. What comes out to us, it is in this powerful allegory, is that there is a union we are supposed to have with Christ. There is an intimacy that we need to have, that we don't live. Whereupon is he talking? You know, it's not like you are forcing yourself. He says, if you are with me and I in you, then we remain one thing. So he says that he is the, actually the reason of our existence. He is actually our productivity. And he is our fruitfulness. I want you to get that. He gives an indisputable fact, as many of us think, that at one point as a Christian, you can lose your salvation. But if you submit yourself to God, then you become an indisputable child of God. Amen. So you, on, your, on, your, on your forehead, you just read Jesus. Okay? I said this, and I loved it when one of the meetings, that 
one of our speakers was going somewhere to preach. And one of the things that was written on where he was standing is, is like, we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus here. So, and uh, you are standing in this place and you are unworthy like the servant of God is this morning. You feel like you should preach from this place. What I'm trying to say here is Jesus speaks in chapter 15 and he says, I am the meat. I am the, I am the one that produces fruitfulness. I am the one, the essence of everything. Thank God that many of us are submitting in the presence of God. When you submit in the presence of God, some of you, God is going to give you the productivity and people will think, how comes your success is so easy? Because God will help you to understand. I don't know whether I told you there was a time that I was going for a mission and we prepared the mission, the exam was coming. Then they went to study. Where I read some few passages that night, the exam came from there and I passed and I thank God. And these are the things we are talking about, that when you are in the presence of God, God opens your eyes and you are able to touch where productivity comes. Many of you might have read this thing of the ship that was actually dormant for a long time because of a mechanical issue. And all people had tried to repair it until one came and just took a hammer and hit some place and he asked several dollars of money, millions. And when he was asked, you can actually just charge by hitting the hammer to the right. He said, no, they are not paying me because of hitting the hammer. It requires a skill to know where to hit. Praise the Lord. This is what we are talking about. You may think that singing is very easy. When I come here, I mute my phone because you think my, my microphone. For you to produce the desired sound on that thing, my friend, it needs you to be with Jesus. Amen. You need to realize that you are connected to the right vine the productivity. Because many of us can actually be busy bodies in our workers. And if you do not shape it by having the Spirit of God, we will continue to wake up every day and yet we are not productive. So Jesus Christ is the essence of our existence, our productivity, and our fulfillment. So we minister from the place of strength when we are in the presence of God, when we remain connected. I want us to get this clearly. If we are connected to God, we will be able to be effective even in the marketplace. People will not doubt, okay? I realize that even thieves don't actually trust thieves, so they will wonder, Christian. Many of you will be employed in a place and you ask me, Pastor, can I take this job? I tell you, go as a missionary because you are connected to God and you believe you can produce fruits in that place. In the book of John, one of the fruits or one of the key principles, I told you about the lion, it was part of my example, it was not a by the way. One of the indisputable principles that Jesus produces about the fruit, you being indisputable, having a principle, is being able to dwell in what we call I am. Where we have read here, in the book of John, we have several statements that are referred to as I am. And Jesus, even uh, God, in the Old Testament, he would say, I am who I am. So chapter 15, verse 1 to 3, and verse 5 to 6, he says, I am the bread of life, in John chapter 5, and chapter 6, verse 35. He's, he's the bread of life. He says that I am the light of the world. He is the one that shines ahead of, of, of everything. In, in John chapter 10, verse 7, he says, I am, I am the door of the ship. We are the ship. He's the one that gives us the gateway to get where we want to go. He also says that uh, in 10 chapter verse 14, he says, I am the shepherd. I am the one that produces, guides you and leads you. I am the shepherd. He also says that I am the resurrection and life. What he means that when situations are dead, he's the one that speaks to us. And he is able to give the life. He also says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. My DSP was able to uh, allude to this when he was speaking about the quest of his present in chapter 14, verse 6. He was just giving them an assurance. But in chapter 15, he says that I am the true vine. He is the one that actually gives us the productivity. So he claims who he is. Many of you are aware that in many cases that when Jesus was walking around, people would not know where, who he was. And many times people don't know who you are. And many of you don't introduce yourself. Many of you have never known who El Dawambua is when he's not here. Many of you do not know that you are a father, okay? You are a grandfather, maybe. 
or to be. And now Jesus, he would accept so many titles. At one point, I told you last week that when Jesus was at a place, he had to ask um, uh, Peter who he was after many people said, oh, you are a teacher, you are... And he said, God has revealed to you. But how comes John captures the teaching of Jesus when Jesus is introducing himself? For many of you who are school of leadership, you will agree with me that a boss does not necessarily come to say, I'm the boss. <laughs> On very rare occasion, would the boss do that? Maybe you have offended him or he's very excited. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Those are two things that will happen when the boss will start to remind the people that I am your senior pastor. Two occasions. When you have offended the boss and when the boss is very happy, he just wants to tell you, please, I'm Jajua Kazienu, please get to your place, get to your place. Or you want to remind them are very significant. What he's saying is, it's a point of emphasis for us to remain in the presence of God. We need to know which presence, which presence, praise the Lord. There are places you go and you want to sit. How comes, thank you my elder for mentioning that, I didn't want to mention Martha and Mary, that Mary decided to see Jesus, and this is a trouble, you know, and he sits at the feet of Jesus, but the other one is trouble because Mary designed who Jesus was, and he decided to sit there. Many of us in this prayer and fasting, your work is very difficult, but if you knew who God is, you would choose to sit at his feet because you know who he is. I was in a wedding yesterday for one of our son in this place. They realized people were not in a hurry to leave because they knew what that occasion meant to them. When God means a lot to you, you come to the place that you enjoy the fellowship with him. And that is not a waste of time. It is a productive. It's a principle number one that I want to put across this morning. So this last of these I am statements, twice Jesus points out that he is divine. In verse 1, he adds the qualifying word that he is the true vine. I'm the true vine. We have elders who are sitting, and I have my retired elder, Rono, there. So, Kiono Nanda Kujikumbusha, a distinguishing factor that the other one is a former boss, Mimi Nikohapa. He says that I'm the true vine. This is the true sense. This is the true. This is the true in the sense of real, substantial, and enduring. Jesus is saying the disciples, and you know why Jesus is doing this emphasis? It's because the disciples were always worried. In chapter 14, verse 1, you know, when they ask where you are going, what will you happen? So he's telling them, please, this is the pillar. Sit here. The wall is not going to fall on you. In the Old Testament, God often introduced himself that I am who I am. And this is the fruit of our belief. This is the fruit of our belief. I believe that God will do that. The disciples are the branches of the vine. But he went on to point out there are two kinds of branches. One is that if you look at the, there is unproductive fruit. The I am, the one we are asking that we need to sit in his presence. Because when you talk about productivity or you being productive, it is dependent on how connected you are. Some of you are still uh, driving um, uh, manual vehicles. When the gear is not in the right place, actually you waste a lot of fuel, you ram your car, and the, actually you are wasting your car. And some of us, we remain like that. We work every day. I don't know whether some of you have ever attempted to go and chop a tree with actually a blunt uh, uh, panga or axe, or even to go and do a plowing when you, are, you don't have the right uh, tool that is there. So he says that he cuts off and he throws it in the lake of fire. This is the tragedy of many of us who are like Judas Iscariot, who would appear like a branch but they are unproductive. They do not know how to dwell in the presence of God. By the way, I want to appeal to us. I like, there are two critical things that somebody taught me, that you should never misunderstand the worship and the word. Of course, you'll be blessed when you give. Thank you, Pastor. But these two. <laughs> so now that the service is beginning at 8, I want many of you to come. You connect. When you come, when service has not gone, you realize you are still actually closing your door and the pastor is praying and preaching. Learn to be in a meeting. 
Leave alone even the meeting. Even in your workplace, learn to be in a meeting before it begins. It helps you to be connected, okay? It helps you to be productive. But when you're in a hurry like this, you waste many things. I was saying, let your feet be in everything that you want to do, lest you become unproductive. There are some of us who are teachers. The day you entered is the day you are leaving. My friend, you have remained unproductive because you have not learned to enjoy the presence of God. You have not learned to enjoy where you are. You have not learned to sit down. I thank God for the African culture. We don't sit, we don't even eat walking around. You sit on the table very well, and then you eat. You will enjoy food. But if you walk around, in fact, they say that you will never actually be nourished. You will end up being malnourished when you run up and down. I don't know the truth of that in science. What I'm saying is you need to be productive, connection, connected to whatever you are doing, connected. Believe that you are serving God and be in whatever you're serving. Say, God, I will serve you for one year so long as I'm here, and that will be good. Don't be here and there. That is what I'm speaking. He says in the productive fruit that I am prunes. Now, for that that is unproductive, what God does is he, he says it is thrown away. It is removed. It's like God in this particular place when he talks about the fruit in his presence. When the fruit is unproductive, God is not interested in that. He's interested in a fruit that is productive so that he can prune, he can chop and be able to guide and lead. So the arm prunes these branches. And the same word used for pruning is purging or cleansing. He cleanses us. Every time we show productivity, he shapes us. For many of us who are workplace and maybe you are managers, some of us are encouraged to do short courses. That is pruning. These guys, they are musicians, but they practice. So if actually the best of our best in music would practice twice to sing once, then who are you? At one point, you believe that you are the master of everything. You don't want God to cleanse you. One of the things that I like about the prayer and fasting in a group, it has God cleanse me, make me to be the desired vessel. I'm the work in progress. I have not arrived. Praise the Lord. Where is my destination? Christ in this, say, I have said, he's the essence of driving. Am I like Christ in thinking? Am I like Christ in my walk? Am I like Christ in my talk? This is the thing we're talking about in the presence of God. I am productive. We are not saying that we are all of us actually giants or we are people we could say we are legends in the things of God. Even myself, I'm going before God and say, God, help me to be like you. You know, some of you are praying to be like your senior pastor or one of your elders. The thing is, let Christ be the focus. So allow God to chop some of the things that you know about yourself and pray for them actually in this season every day in the name of Jesus. And that calls for prayer and fasting. That calls the disciplines that you would want to do. Don't just fast when things are bad. Because Christ is pruning the productive fruits. This is what I was putting there, that fast when things are okay to be pruned. Because many of us actually seek help when things are wayward. Actually, most of our counseling, even in marriages, when they come to our cases, they are just standing on a string. Come when they are good. When you ask you to come to our primarital classes, some of you need to walk in and see, what do you do in these classes? Some of you need to walk in our discipleship classes and just say, what do you do in these discipleship classes? Some of us need to walk in some of our baby dedication classes and say, I, I dedicated my child a long time ago. Can I refresh myself? Some of us need to come to our primaritos and come. Because many of us come to seek help when things have gone bad. Now, when they go bad, we are unproductive. The only thing we can do, and Jesus is saying here, sorry for lack of a better word, you are obsolete. He's thrown away. Because in accounting, things that cannot be recovered, what do we do with them? We declare them obsolete. Obsolete means they have no meaning or we can sell them. Have you ever heard, I saw a vehicle being sold at 80,000. Now some of you, even the tires alone are not 80,000. What does that mean? It's been declared obsolete. You have no value. So you are thrown away. But when you come to the garage, that's why you service your vehicles after 5,000 kilometers, 10,000. It makes it run effectively. And God is able to do, to use that vehicle to serve you. That is what he's speaking to us. Church, we don't need to speak and pray when things are bad. 
taking even time in this season to pray for our children, not because any child, our children have gone anyway, but lay hands on them and pray for them. Pray for our nation. Let's not wait for the next five elections. We start praying for the nomination. We should start praying now for God to prune us. That is the essence of the I am who I am. Amen? Amen. The second principle that I see in this passage, which I say the fruit that is abiding. There. I say that I'm using the word the fruit, meaning the principle. I've used the article there to say that it is indispensable for you if you follow this principle to be actually be delineated from God. You remain to be a child of God. And I'm praying that we were going to be. One of them is abide in me. Now, God, he says, or Jesus says, uh, abide or remain in me. In this passage, the word abide or remain in one form or the other is repeated 15 times in the book of chapter 15. Why is it remain in me? Remain in me. Because you have a chance of not remaining in God. The image we are given in this is that intimate union of a believer with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the disciple's life depends on this union. May God hold us closer to his heart in this season, regardless of the life challenges. Amen? May he hold us closer. There are many of us who are feeling that, Pastor, I can't pray. What I have gone through or what I went through last year, I can't pray. What Jesus is saying, remain in me. In fact, we have just come from chapter 14, when it began and they say, and they were troubled. And then they left the place. They say, remain in me. So the, when you are troubled, learn to be closer to God. Don't say, I believe that God has not heard my prayer. There is no trash for our prayers. Many of us need to continue to remain in him. He repeats, English teachers in this place, or some of us who are good in linguistics, they say, when a point is re repeated, it is an emphasis. Why would Jesus repeat 15 times about abiding in him? He is emphasizing that please just be connected with me. And that is the essence of our belief as a church this year. That we will remain in God and him in us. Amen. And we will do many things. I can tell you, church, if we remain in God. I was waking up in the morning and I was listening to some of the worship and saying, can this be happening in the church? That in the morning at six, we just have worship. My friend, things will fall in the right place. We'll be productive. Some of you will be going in the workplaces and say, profit be. Then you will just be collecting profit. Amen. I'm not saying that you will not be working. God will be able to produce fruitfulness in your business, in your work. Remain in him. Do not doubt and sit on God's seat. There are many things that have cheated us. One of my friends was still struggling in salvation. So his salary had been pushed up. So he was asking whether his tithe should be that particular lump sum. So if you get a promotion that takes you over 300,000, over to what you are earning, I will not tell you what he was earning. But now, that means you need to add God the 30,000. Now, he's thinking to move away from God because God has blessed him. Or you are just around money. Some of you work in, the, in clubs like uh, uh, Eldoret Club, when people come, they just put money. So you, you sit around money like you would sit around some soil. You get to say, can I just put on off this court of Jesus and count this money? You know the counting I'm talking about? He says this, remain in me. Remain in me. There is an emphasis here because Judas is thinking to go and go with some money. There is a temptation that comes to our life. Many of us and God uh, takes us many places. You want to believe that God is boxing, you know, to do the right things. Jesus is saying and emphasizing, remain in me. Even when that sickness looks like now it's not being treated, don't think that you need to go now to the witch doctors. Remain in him. Amen? Just as the branch can only produce fruit when it's attached to the vine, similarly it is when believers are attached to the Lord Jesus Christ that they can produce fruit. Fruit. Apart from him, in fact, he says, you can do nothing. For some people who are doing anything and everything, we are saying, if they are not in him, they are doing nothing. Some chant writing this week, I like his, his weekly devotions. You see, there are many people who look like they are chasing wind. Somebody is building a large university. And after that, he asks himself, what have I done? It is because 
he did not begin with the earth. He didn't bring the glory of God. For many of you, if you do business and ask yourself, would my business bring the glory of God? It will be something. Otherwise, it will be after chasing wind. You will do that family together, and without God, you would look like nothing. Not because it is nothing. It is because it will not give you the pleasure and the glory that God desires. So you have money, and yet you don't enjoy it. You have a family, and yet you don't enjoy it. You have a career, and yet you don't enjoy it. So you are chasing and chasing without a rival. That's what I'm saying. You have no destination. You just have a greed and lust over things. Now, this is what God is speaking. It's very deep. In fact, when I looked at it, how can nothing be when I have something? How can that be? It's because you not find pleasure. You will like be driving and walking at a place you are not arriving. Have you ever used Google and you go and it tells you 300 kilometers ahead, 300 kilometers ahead, and you are enjoying the vehicle has fuel and you are going and you are going. My friend, you are chasing wind. You do nothing if you are without Christ. We will come to church without Christ and we will do nothing. Therefore, this is the necessity for us to remain in Christ. When you remain in Christ, already have said, we will experience answered prayers. You will come at a place and say, God, you answered prayer. Otherwise, some of us will be making prayers that are endless and look like you are doing a summary of all that you are doing. When you abide in him, you say, God, I had this at the end of the month. I desired a family. I desired children. I desired to be promoted. I desired to serve you. And now serving. So God, you have answered me. When you do that, God will also be glorified when you, do, when you abide in him. He's going to be lifted because he's the essence of us abiding in him. If it's not glorified, you will chase after many things. And yet, you don't get them. Mention to some of our small group here that you even build a good house, but when you enter there, you feel like there is no happiness, there is no joy. Sad enough, they may not be sleep. I have ever prayed only for one person. That time, I didn't have a house. And they asked me, Pastor, it was just after service like this in one of our a long time ago. And people asked me, Pastor, we are not sleeping. We're just feeling like they are noise. Not, they were not fighting, but there was no peace in the bedroom. So they asked me, anoint the bedroom. You can imagine the house they have lived alone, anoint this bedroom to sleep. When some of us are sleeping and I'm preaching, when you just sleep just comes when you are driving. Others I cannot sleep on a comfortable bed. This is what I'm saying, that you have a good house. And in fact, when I was praying for them to find sleep, at one point I was praying, I also want this bed. It was good. <laughs> And they say, why am I sleeping? Even the vehicle just passed the dire. We think that the devil is around this home. But and one day I also want to have like this. <laughs> I have not done my bedroom to that extent. I had to go for the anointing oil and we prayed that the people would find sleep. What I'm saying is this, that God can give you things that you can enjoy. Many of us can actually wear second-hand clothes and you will see God glorified. Many of us will still eat vegetables, but you will see God glorified. But without God, many of us will seem like we are chasing after wind. We will accumulate so many things and yet ask ourselves, what have we accumulated? In fact, the last part which he says, he says, you will bear much fruit. In his presence, when you abide in him, God is going to give you peace. He's going to give you something from inside that will bear much fruit. In fact, when I was reading this passage, I went back also to do an exposition on the life of Jesus. Jesus was single. He was not married. Many of you know that. I should not remind you. And Jesus, when he was doing so many miracles, after doing one of the greatest miracles, one young man says, I want to sleep where you sleep. He was thinking, I'm going to dedicate that house I've talked about. And Jesus tells this young man, the son of man has no place to lay his head. This is the man that talks to us about having much fruits. There is something deeper in the presence of God that goes beyond the things we have considered as success. That some of us, when we follow Christ and we say, God, I want to be having these flowers in my house. That is not what Jesus is talking about. This young man said, I think he was like maybe one of our, <laughs> you talked of hedonism, the people were after me. Well, he said, I want to sleep where you sleep. Oh, Pastor, I have been seeing you going with your Range Rover. And Jesus said, I walk on food. In fact, I, don't, I just live where I have stopped. You bear much fruit. The much fruit Jesus talks about this place 
it is more spiritual, peace of mind, and a contentment that goes beyond what we have considered as fruits in our own way. In fact, that should sing in your head as we go through this, that this theme is meant to make all of you think and be able to understand that God is for us. There are people who have come to sit them, and they get falsified when they see vehicles and say, if I don't have a vehicle, will I come? I met somebody in one of the funerals said, can I afford to give offering? I know some of us who come here and you give whatever. We have not asked you to be able to, uh, or classified. One minister in Africa has actually classified people. While our millions, they sit second row. Some of you know him. And the other one is a great minister. I will not quote his name for fear of being this. That is not. There is much fruit without money. There is much fruit without the opulence and accumulation of many titles that many of us have. That is what God is talking about. The peace and belonging that many of you will come to this place and you say, I feel to go to church. That's what I'm talking about. The much fruits that goes beyond that. The last principle that he talks here is about intimacy. It's not all of them. Intimacy. That God may hold us closer to his heart and never release us. It is when the disciples are fully connected to God that they begin to show responsive obedience. They are connected. They are connected to one another. He says, if you keep my commands, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandment, I will abide in his love. It is a principle. You intimate. It's a principle. We follow it, you'll be in the presence of God. Otherwise, you'll be like a lion that succeeded one day, and another day you'll go. Be close to God. Seek ways that God is going to help you be closer to him. Don't, I don't know whether some of you have woken at a place and you feel you don't have to pray, particularly if you have not prayed for a long time, just like I've used the vehicle. For many of us who drive particularly the manual vehicles, if you don't drive that vehicle for a month or two, the day you begin or you go to ignite that vehicle, you will jump start it. This is it. Be closer. Be closer to God. Work ways of lubricating your faith. You will have overflowing joy. This is part of the much fruit I'm talking about. These things I've spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. That is verse 11. When you are intimate with God, you will have overflowing joy. And I pray that in this year, all of us will have joy. Joy, unlike happiness, is from the inside. Happiness is when we see our face. Like now, when how many of us are fasting, we'll not be able to laugh, but inside we are feeling happy. We are feeling ignited to walk with God. That comes with our intimacy with God. In fact, they have said that when you see us actually disobeying, majority of our hearts is away from God. So we, we tend to disobey, but when we are close to God, we seek to abide the rules of the game. What I'm saying is for us to dwell in the presence of God, to be that fruit that will not be cut off, the fruit. In fact, that's what I've said in his presence for many of you who have just come and are trying to explain is that I want you to be an indispensable connected person to God by following these three principles, being intimate with God, learning to abide in his presence, and just being able to understand he is who he is. He doesn't have to tell you many things. He is many things. He says, yeah, I am the true vine. He's emphasizing this because we doubt him. And he is our God. He's going to walk with us in this year. I want to conclude by saying, Jesus Christ would want his life to be revealed and manifested to us. That is the desire. And we have to allow him. He's actually asking us, just allow me to be new. He's asking that, simply like that. I am the door. Will you enter? So if you abide in me, he says, I have the power. But you are, are you choosing what I'm saying? This requires that we abide in his presence. Just to sit at his feet, he will do much in our families. Some of us are fighting battles. Some of us are fighting battles every day. My friend, a good cow in the slaughter dies well. red, peaceful. It, it struggles, it refuses to die. 
and it dies painfully because sometimes the, 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 the slaughter might do some more harm to it. My wife is about to tell you that. Or it is to live. You will get that. God wants us to be peaceful at his presence. And I'm telling you, you're going to enjoy your work in this year. You'll enjoy the work. Many of you are working and your employer is not regarding your work. Don't fight. We are in his presence. Tell God, manifest yourself. I'm abiding in you. He will show up for you. Amen? Many of you have had so many court cases. You have used many to go to the person and say, God, tell me what I'm supposed to do for me just to move with one way and get it. I know my friend, somebody has refused. He leased his property and he has refused to, to go away. <laughs> Leasing, not buying. So it's a court case many years. I'm telling you, go in the presence of God and you'll be able to get through. Some of us know what right is supposed to be served to you, but it's become like a legal battle. I'm praying that you dwell in his presence. Because in him we have the, press, the, the principle of success, the principle of us moving forward and bearing the fruit that he desires in us. I want us to bow our head down, and I want to ask an outer call for many of us who might be struggling on any area, uh, could be even like you feel like you want to give. You are going to work, but you struggle. You struggle because you know, even the employer knows he pays you little. But for you, you just become a struggle, like you're becoming disobedient that they may see. I want to pray that God gives you peace.